and welcome to another edition of Kaleidoscope on Channels Television. Many thanks for joining us. I'm Anne Mwawadu. On the program today, my chat with the Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer of Anko Insurance Company Limited, Augustine Ebose, reveals the organization's business, how it has survived over three decades and its corporate social responsibility activities. Also on the show, we show you the concluding part of highlights of activities by some organizations we featured in 2020. Once again, welcome to Kaleidoscope. Anko Insurance Company Limited is an organization that provides general and special risks insurance services in Nigeria. Let's find out how it all began. In June 1989, Anko Insurance Company Limited was registered, and in October 1989, it was licensed by the National Insurance Commission (NICOM) as a general business non-life insurance outfit. The company commenced business in November of the same year, starting off operations from its registered office in Uyo, Akwaibom State. Later, for strategic reasons, Anka Insurance joined its fellow underwriting outfits in Lagos with its corporate head office in Victoria Island. Anko Insurance Company Limited has not less than 18 branches located at strategic cities across the country. The company has constantly shown strength and strong innovation in timely claims administration, customer experience delivery, product creation, and yearly bottom line performance. The board of the company is composed of accomplished turnaround professionals from different business fields whose experiences have continued to ensure the organization consistently puts its best foot forward. All general insurance businesses by Anko Insurance Company Limited include property insurance, engineering insurance, liability and bonds insurance, marine insurance, group personal accident, goods and transit, oil and AMP, gas, special risk insurance, retail and personal line insurance, motor insurance, aviation insurance, micro insurance, loss of employment insurance scheme, agriculture insurance, travel insurance, among others. Anko Insurance has strongly reinsurance and treaty arrangements and is a member of international, regional and local insurance organizations such as African Insurance Organization AIO, West African Insurance Association WICA, and Nigerian Insurance Association NIA. Well, let's hear more from the CEO of Anko Insurance Company Limited, who took up the leadership role in 2018. 30 years of thriving in the insurance sector. What has kept Anko Insurance afloat? As to professionalism, dogged and happy working staff, creating leadership within the system, giving them free hand to do what they know how to do best with less supervision. That gives you the expression to excel, and that has paid off for Anko. If you go around, you see our young working force. They are all independent, work independently for this company, which of course also has helped us in this lockdown time. So I'm very proud of them, proud of what we are doing here in Anchor. The human capital development is our highest asset in Anchor Insurance, and we'll, we'll do more. So what exactly do you think stands your organization out in the insurance sector in Nigeria? Prompt payment of claim. We've done so well in the last three years that independent newspaper recognized this and gave us the best insurance company award in 2019. We also had two awards from London and Switzerland that we could not attend. And we've done so well in the sense that we decided to expose this company because we found out in the last 28 years we existed. Not much was heard about this company. So when I came on board, I feel, I feel the first thing you do is that People have to know you to deal with you. And we decided to come out. We had our generic advert on Anchor Insurance, the logo of who we are, Anchor Insurance. I always hope people have every money on channels and CNN. And that has done the magic. In the first year we came here, in, 20, in 2018, we did 3.4 billion, which was a huge 
performance from where we're coming from. In the following year, we did 4.1 billion. As I speak to you today, we're on 6.5 billion. This is 2021, the first January. As I speak to you now, we've done 3 billion already. So if you look, we have done 6.5 billion in, 2000 and in 2020, the pandemic year, which was very dangerous for everyone. But in 2021, first week of January, we've done 3 billion already. So you will find out that that stands us out. And I'm very sure if there are wars that are coming, we will take. And we are ready to take. And we are ready to project this company. Everybody in this country, all over the world, should watch out for Anchor. Despite the economic challenges in 2019, Anchor Insurance was able to bring our volume of business, which amounted to about 490 billion naira. That's about 15.5% in terms of premium. I mean, the sector's profit before tax, your assets, all appreciated. What do you think your organization did differently to achieve these feats? And, uh, when you see a system growing, you look at those behind it. We have staff that have knack for growth, who are taken to instructions. And as a CEO of this organization, I have a lot to prove. What would make us different is the question. But what we are doing differently, I will tell you. Accor Insurance was the first to introduce online real time for third party insurance in Nigeria. We have loss of employment, which is the first of its kind in this country. And some of these things we have done. So when we came, we found out that the only way we can grow is try as much as possible to grow the indices. What do we do? We fill the gap where we feel there was a gap. In our human capital development, in our technical department, and we increase our reinsurance to enable us to have access and retain more businesses. And that's what we did. So with that uh, retention high, we find out that a lot of businesses that we were not able to take at the time, we're not taking them. Our insurance is robust. I, I cannot forget the area of claim anytime you ask me such a question because claim is a psychosome part of insurance. When people, when you pay claims, people trust you, they believe in you, and they want to come back to you again. Because if you do business and you have a sour taste, nobody wants to come back. I can't begin to imagine the volume of claims that organizations or insurance sectors in Nigeria has received from clients, from the NSAS protest, the wanton destruction of property, to the COVID-19 pandemic. How has Anco Insurance been able to manage this? Well, Anco Insurance is the microcosm of the entire insurance industry. It's an insurance industry based on termidrous loss, either through COVID-19 or the NSAS. The first phase of the COVID-19 was very terrible, but we are happy um, to see that our reinsurance was very robust, so we didn't have much of direct um, uh, shock from that. That's how there is loss, but we were able to su survive. Then the NSAS also came with its own, uh, but we didn't have much to lose as well because our insurance was very robust. The reinsurance is a psychosome part of insurance. Once that is done, you, you stand on a good step, and appropriate pricing and right pricing. But I want to ensure on Nigerians that even some people didn't believe in insurance before. That has created awareness for insurance, um, looking at the, uh, the positive sides of both pan uh, pandemic and NSAS. Because if you look at it, since the pandemic and NSAS, the insurance, insurance industry has benefited from awareness. A lot of people do not believe in insurance. Um, so that they, I have a client in, um, in one of the shopping malls who um, I've spoken to many years to say, look, there's need for you to cover um, your, the, what the businesses that you are doing. She didn't see the need to do that. But when the pandemic came, she lost all that she has. Now, she has few things in the shop as that compared to what she had then, but now she has insured them. So you see that this is a lesson for everyone that there is need for insurance. And I'm still using the opportunity to talk to everybody in this country, especially our government. There is need for us to have insurance. And when you consider that, please consider and call first. So let's talk about corporate social responsibility now. How seriously does your organization take this? Social responsibility is a part of our administration here because 
the community and the society itself is part of us. That's where we are all from. Uh, you cannot be growing your premium shit or GPI and not care about the society where you operate from. It's only a good mind that will look at the environment. It's only a bad mind that will look at the environment and say to help with them because that environment is what all of us belongs. So we do much, so much for our corporate social responsibility, either to government and government agencies. So numerous, I will mention a few. The Akwaibu State Government, the PPE, we don't say so, so many items to them, which we we'll do regularly. We've done that. We also done to Federal Road Safety Commission um, for 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 their workers to help as they help accident victims and all that. Then we also do to orphanage homes, schools. We've gone to set up a program for Akwaibu State and so many universities in this country that the best students of insurance would definitely come to our tutelage. Because when you catch them young and give them this responsibility, imagine if I was taught insurance at a very tender age. Maybe I, wouldn't, I would have long been an MD at the age of seven, uh, uh, 35 or 25, as the case may be. But we need to catch them young and take these people off the street. And we also sometimes um, take journalists um, on the um, uh, road, road show and road walk where we also um, sponsor their programs in terms of also telling them the society how to preach so, so that it can help generate some insurance interest among the journalists. I know so many journalists are not insured, but we always preach this gospel to them. So there is need for every person in this country to give back to society, no matter how little it is. So call is has taken um, CSRO as an integral part of its growth. As we grow, our CRS will grow. We have budget every time every year um, for CSR. Last year was about 40 million. This year we are increasing it to so about uh, 60 million as the case may be. If possible, much more. We also, we're also planning to do something for, um, we donated to Nikon in terms of this uh, pandemic when it started for Lagos State Government as well. We have done that and we are going to do more as life progresses. You support social programs geared towards projecting Nigeria's cultural heritage. Why the interest in culture and what's the experience been like for you? Wonderful experience. A society that has forgotten its culture is a lost society. In ACO, we believe in tradition, culture and our environment. If the culture of insurance, for example, is eroded, well, then we've lost insurance. So why must we lose our culture? Culture, our culture has a lot to do with integrity, which is synonymous with insurance. Our culture also believes that environment should be kept tidy. And this is what we believe in our insurance. Our culture believes in growth. And in our we believe in growth. So our culture, for us, culture is, is synonymous with us. That's why we have taken time to look and, and sponsor a motor that is a program. If you walk out of the office, you see the emblem that was a motor is a heritage of the Benin Kingdom. And in the next few days, there's a program coming up in Akwaibom that will also be very, we are interested, in fact, we are the major sponsors of that program that has to do with the tradition and the culture of the ethic and the Bibios. Their culture needs to be enlivened. A people without a culture does not have a history. So if our culture must, must stand, our history must stand, and we must all understand where we're coming from. If we don't know where we are going, we must know where we are coming from. Next, I ask Mr. Buse if Nigerians recognize the value of insurance and what can be done to boost people's confidence in insurance policies. Well, uh, before now, the, there's low penetration of insurance interest in our country. Like I said earlier, looking at the pandemic and the NSAS protests and seeing the losses that, that followed, a lot of people have seen the need, not because they are interested, but the need to do insurance, to have insurance policies. If you ask me, um, is it much? I will tell you no. But are we coming up? I will say yes. But in future, is it bright for us? I will tell you yes. Because if you have a, a percent of, if you have a 2% of 100%, in 2019, and there is a whether minute or significant growth in the, in, the, in the following year of 2020, let's say 4%, would that be called a growth? Yes, it's a growth, no matter how minute it is. But is that the kind of growth we need in our country, insurance fair? Absolutely no.
Insurance is a cardinal um, economic uh, pursue, pursue, pursuer or developmental agent to the development of those uh, uh, co uh, countries' economy. But here, the, economy, the insurance sector is seen as the last subsector of the economic development. It's not supposed to be so. Why would government, for example, have a budget to rebuild properties that were burned by fire? It's absolutely ridiculous. There are budget, a budget allocation we made for a property that you have built that got burnt. Then why did you not do insurance policy? There's fire insurance policy and special spare, burglary and all that. They are, not, they are not taking interest in that. I call on the government because those laws are there, but the legislation is weak. The National Assembly should come out with a deliberate plan to make sure that insurance industry, insurance are accepted in this country. Look at, for example, the health insurance. It was a when pandemic came. Is that releasing money for health insurance? But what does that mean? People have lost. But I commend them, for, at least for coming up at all, for doing that. But we should do more and see insurance as part of our life. Why would people go to bank today? And we are asking for uh, NI, NIN number, a BVN number. You see, the bank, for you to go to the bank these days and, and do fraud is much more difficult. But one policy, one deliberate policy by government, with, with catapult insurance to the highest level. It's not because I'm a practitioner, but we all need insurance. Me, as a practitioner, I have policies that even if I misplace my shoe today, I can go for recovery. Insurance is so important that it does not make your life come back. It makes your life emotion, stabilizes you. The loss, oh, I have lost everything, is not there. It puts you back to the state that you were before the loss. So I will call on Nigerians to appreciate insurance and take it very seriously. Your regulator, the Niger Insurance Commission, NICOM, has ordered a recapitalization of insurance sector. How is Anchor Insurance meeting these requirements by NICOM? Well, um, the recapitalization exercise um, to us has come as um, an opportunity going to increase our capacity as, insurance uh, as an insurance company. If you need to play big, you need to act big, you need to get yourself involved in a very big manner. And that's what we are doing. Um, before the recapitalization exercise came, the board, the esteem board of this company has already approved the recapitalization exercise of this company. The, the, why the NICOM is asking for 10 billion, our directors has approved that we do, we increase our capital base to about 11 billion. Uh, as I speak to you, we almost at 9.6 billion. We just have about 300 million to round up the recapitalization exercise. You know, it was in two phases after the first uh, cancellation of the solvency manager. As it is today, we have done, um, it's about 50%. Um, uh, we already have a letter given to us by NICOM to show we have made the first phase of the capitalization exercise, only awaiting uh, verification, which has not come. So um, before uh, 21st um, September 2021, um, this company will have fully recapitalized. And um, we are very grateful that um, the board listened to us, our shareholder listened to us, and the staff is um, also very um, happy because that will give all of us opportunity. Um, not just that we're having that opportunity, we're not, uh, we not managing. We're coming out all alone um, to, to keep the identity of the company, which of course will not be lost. So that is a milestone for us as an organization. And um, by the grace of God, every other thing will come to play and will remain Anchor Insurance where insurance works. That is what we are. Where do you see Anchor Insurance in the next five years? To be one of the best insurance companies in Nigeria, to be a company where people look up to when there is need, to provide that shoulder to lean on when there is crisis. To be a company where everybody desires to work. Above all, to pay claim promptly and speedily. Having a company like Anchor in the next five years will be synonymous where people will yearn to have a taste, either as a working environment, as an insurance provider, and, and above all, create peace among families. Because the purpose of insurance is to create happiness. And that is what Anchor represents.
Last week, we brought you highlights of various sectors where organizations are contributing their own quota to develop. So we show you the concluding part featuring more corporate social responsibility initiatives carried out in 2020 and, of course, their future plans. Think of micro, small and medium enterprises as the engine of the country. They create 70% of the jobs that are created. They solve a lot of solutions with their products and services. With an entrepreneur, it usually starts with an idea. And so we have programs that are focused on idea stage. So helping people to think, ideate on their businesses, uh, use a design thinking model and think of taking that idea to developing a product or service prototype. So those programs that we do under the ideation are called pre-incubation programs. And then we now do the um, the, the ones that are now focused on, now that you've started that business, you've been able to create that product, that service, how do you get your market to know about it? How do you get your market to buy it? How do you create a business structure around it? So the two main programs that we do around that is the Aspiring Entrepreneurs Program, which by the way, we've run since 2000, and we're currently in our 91st stream of that class, and I'm very excited about that. And then um, the second program that we do is the Orange Corners Incubation Program. So that's the program we do in partnership with the Kingdom of the Netherlands. Um, with the Orange Corners Incubation Program, we have um, a funding portfolio of between 5,000 uh, euros, sometimes about 20,000 euros, where people are able to build and grow that idea with additional funding support. We launched that last year. With the Aspiring Entrepreneurs Program, we do that across Nigeria. We've been able to reach about 13 states um, and counting in the last three years, and we do that in partnership with different organizations. One of them is Facebook. And with the partnership we have with Facebook, we even detail it um, to a program called the Aspiring Entrepreneurs Digital. Sometimes you'd have started with products and services, and then you now um, you now come across new opportunities, and that's where our Emerging Entrepreneurs Program comes up. Then the last set of programs that we do, which we introduced in 2017, is our Scale-Up Lab Accelerator Program. And that looks at high growth potential businesses in line with Nigeria's growth trajectory. So agri-businesses, agri creatives, health, and education. So we see a bright future, we see a great future, and we see us continue to evolve in so many, um, so many ways, reaching more than the 180,000 entrepreneurs that we've reached, and ensuring that we, we are able to support entrepreneurs to invest in Nigeria, to build Nigeria, and to create wealth. The ExxonMobil affiliates in Nigeria, they're upstream companies, uh, there are three companies. Uh, one is a joint venture, and the other two are uh, production sharing contract companies. Um, we have Mobile Producing Nigeria, the joint venture, and then you have ESO Exploration and Production Nigeria Limited and ESO Exploration Production Offshore East Limited. And all of them um, contribute quite significantly to the country. In terms of corporate social responsibility, the key focus areas for the companies are in health, in education, in economic empowerment, in women empowerment and entrepreneurship, as well as sports. And those areas we've done things in the last 50 years we've been in this country. Apart from providing um, very significant levels of crude production, we've been able to contribute in terms of revenue in the last 10 years at least $130 billion. And that has come from taxes, from royalties, and we, our joint venture partner NMPC, their share of profit. And that has been significant in the revenue profile of the country. On a going forward basis, we are committed to ensuring that our oil production is seamless, cost effective, and continues to bring the benefit to the country. Um, it's our mainstay in the nation, and it's something we want to make sure we run efficiently so that the revenues are sustained. And we want to also continue to support the governments and communities in, this, in the areas where we operate. Because if you say charity begins at home, if you don't ensure that those areas are well developed, it becomes difficult. Um, we want to touch as many lives as we can from our operations in the things we do, and that's our commitment. Jaza Health Justice is about protecting our public health. So how do we safeguard this nation and ensure that everyone is protected from potential health emergencies like Ebola outbreak, Lassa fever, yellow fever, and now, for example, COVID-19. And so we're looking at how do we strengthen and build resilience within Nigeria's health sector? How do we ensure that every community has the water and sanitation they need to maintain good hygiene, good 
good habits that will ensure that they stay healthy? How do we build the capacity of health workers to be able to do what Dr. Adadevo and her team did? If we have more people like that across the country, we know that we will be safe from whatever could come next. We're facing COVID-19 now, but we don't know what the next one is going to be. One of our flagship programs in the community at the community level is actually working with students. We know Nigeria is a very youthful country. We have a lot of youth and we have decided to leverage on that. And so what we've done is set up health and hygiene clubs in secondary schools. And so we have these students, we call them our Jasa ambassadors, and they go out into their communities to address issues of water, sanitation, environmental hygiene, issues that um, can cause and lead to illness and disease. And how they are now the ones that are the advocates to fixing those problems in their communities with our support and our help. The inspiration behind DRASA was really, how do we prevent unnecessary death? Dr. Dadevo and three members of her team sacrificed themselves to save the rest of us. And while we celebrate them and we know that what they did was, was for, our, for the greater public good, as she said at the time, they didn't have to die to protect us. There are ways that we could have helped them, supported them, built their capacity so that they could do what they did, contain the disease, but without contracting it themselves and dying from it. So we have a training program and a capacity building program on the topic of IPC, which is infection prevention and control. And the idea is that we know that Nigeria already has a shortage of health workers. If you look at the number of doctors, for example, we have less than four doctors for every 10,000 people. So we really cannot afford to put them in the line of fire where they will end up losing their lives while serving us and doing their duty. And so through this training program, we ensure that they can do the right thing, but in a safe manner. And we're looking at how do we set up Nigeria's first ever training center using simulation to ensure that this IPC thing really goes far. And so for that, we're looking for support. Donations, of course, in-kind support. We're working with partners, we're collaborating. We want this to be a Nigeria effort. We want this to be something that the country owns um, because we can't always wait for others to come and rescue us every time. Look at COVID-19 now. The other countries that used to come to our rescue before are facing COVID-19 where they are. Sure. So we really have to build our own internal capacity. There's more work to be done and we expect greater achievements from corporate organizations across the country this year. Thank you so much for watching Kaleidoscope today. Please watch out for editions, past editions on youtube.com forward slash channels web. I'll see you again soon. I'm Anne Mwawadu. Please stay safe.